Hi everyone, it's Henry here. And in this video, we're going to take a look at the new Plastic Solar Auxilia Infantry Kit. Now, Games Workshop sent us through the Battle Force box for review, and over the next few weeks, I thought we could go through how you would paint up the infantry, how you can paint up the vehicles, and we just look at a whole heap of different schemes. So in this one, I'm going to show you how I would approach building and then painting a Solar Auxilia Army or the infantry for it. So there's a ton of different schemes in this one, and we'll also take a look at the sprue and, and spoilers, just... I think it's fantastic uh, and if you're into these things I think you're going to have a lot of fun so hopefully there's some useful tips. Now let's paint. So much like the marine sprues that we've seen you've got five poses uh, doubled up you know across to make your squad so what I tend to do is build the first five poses as is out of the box and then the arms whilst they are designed to be built in pairs they can go on any of the bodies so all I do is move one pose along as it were and then put that pair of arms just to create a little bit of variety now when it comes to the arms and whatnot there's a few mislabeled things uh, on the sprue so 24 and 23 you can see here 23 is that arm that's next to it but the, the number is hidden by the little sprue divider thing that's been put in uh, just in case you uh, you're struggling to find it uh, where it could be uh, and then one of the uh, other ones is part 45 uh, this is labeled part 45 this is not part 45 uh, it is in fact I think I'm trying to remember now part 40 some, something like that uh, oh here we go about to show you all the things so it's yeah it's 40 and 41 uh, in the instructions now it's it's as I say it's part 45 uh, on the sprue um, part 40 is in fact the the right arm that you would use on your sergeant uh, miniature so it shouldn't throw you out too much but I did notice it and it's the same across all the sprues that I've got um, so it's not just a mistake on one of them. Uh, and when it comes to gluing the arms on, um, I tend to find the easiest ways to always glue the, the arm that has the rifle or the, or the gun or whatever on it. Uh, glue that in place because it's kind of got a very obvious spot where it sits. Uh, and then once that's dry, I'll put a little dot of glue on the arm socket and the wrist socket. Uh, and then I can just slide in that secondary uh, arm. For me, it's just a sort of foolproof way of getting everything to line up nicely. Uh, so there's no uh, issues with it. Now, we're going to do a bunch of different schemes, uh, and you'll notice if you've seen any of the, the artwork plates that are scattered across various books, and admittedly there aren't tons of them, hopefully we're going to see more and more as these, these books develop and the solar become, a, become bigger players, particularly later in the heresy it seems. Um, but you may want to paint certain things in sub-assembly, such as the helmets. Um, you may also want to paint the chest plate completely differently. Uh, so here I'm just showing you that you can build the arm as a pair absolutely fine you can leave the chest plate off you could effectively build the whole rest of the model uh, and if i was doing this all i do is just blue tap those in uh, when i was priming it and whatnot and then pull them apart get the chest plate done pop it back on uh, and, and carry on my painting uh, from that point so i thought we would do a few of the classic schemes in this first video so when we first saw the solar we saw these manichaean commonwealth um ones that's sort of the blue scheme so this is how I would go about approaching uh, a scheme if I wanted the majority, if not all, of the armor panels the same color. Uh, so I started from a gray primed base, and this is because we're going to have fairly light co colored, um, I guess it's a boiler suit, <laughs> whatever it is they've got on underneath the, uh, the armor plates. Uh, and blue is a very strong color. We don't need to really bother pre-shading with blue. You can tend to just build blue up on top of itself with a lighter blue. Um, without any any issues uh, so I've gone for steel blue which is a Vallejo model air color and then I'm highlighting it with techless blue now all the time I'm spraying at about 20 to 25 psi I'm using a 0.4 millimeter needle and nozzle and this is our harder and steambeck signature series evolution I'm using here uh, and you can see I'm just doing a very very simple uh, highlighting just putting a little bit of light and dark across uh, the armor panels so that's absolutely fine I wanted to do a nice simple army painting uh, approach to all of these miniatures uh, and that means not uh, uh, going overboard, I think, with, with any sort of one detail or one area on the miniature. Um, and trying to evoke a little bit of that older Imperial Armour style painting uh, that we saw from Forge World. Now, for his fatigues, his boiler suit, wherever it is, I've base coated it using a mix of olive drab uh, and Karak stone. And then I'm just going to keep adding Karak stone into the mix uh, to highlight it up with. I just want to take a second to say massive thank you to those of you that support us over on Patreon. Um, you're enabling myself and Andy to do this full time now, both of us, um, and you get exclusive content over on Patreon most weeks. And then obviously you get the videos over on here and it's allowing us to do all of the other projects that we've got coming up this year, which we're 
very excited about uh, things like the MPO and some some other bits like the paints that hopefully we can tell you about uh, very soon. Um, but without your support, we just we wouldn't be able to do it. So we're very, very grateful. Uh, and if for any reason you can't support us over on Patreon, um, but you like what we do, then uh, hitting like, hitting subscribe, telling your mates about our channel, uh, it makes a, a massive difference as we try to just grow sort of slowly and organically uh, through you guys. So thanks again uh, for all of that. Um, oh, I should have mentioned um, when I thinned the paints earlier, I was thinning them roughly one to one with normal airbrush thinner, just whatever gets them going through smooth. You're going to have to change that depending on your uh, your setup uh, with your airbrush. But I always start 50-50 thinner to paint and then adjust uh, from there. Uh, and here I'm just going in with uh, a bit of pure Carac stone to do a final highlight on there. And it's probably the most time consuming part, um, but I think they look awesome. So don't, don't really mind doing it. Now, one of the downsides to starting from that light uh, base coat means that we do need to go in and then black out areas that we want to have black or you know a dark color for leather uh, and all the metal and stuff i think this stage is important and i do it on all my models our commissions chief ben disagrees and particularly if it's metals he thinks you can just paint the metal straight on and then wash them and it's fine so whichever you prefer but for me as i've said before i love this blacking out stage for me it just lets me see the areas of the miniature that left and stuff and I, I, it's an important step for me but it's certainly a op optional depending on your opinion now i've just glossed the little shoulder pads there unfortunately the decal sheets that we get in the set are fairly limited you've got the um sort of rank insignia and stuff on the one hand but then you've only got chthonian headhunters or bormanite uh, devils uh, as options for your cohorts uh, but if you grab the vehicle sheet from the legions imperialis solar stuff those little symbols will fit nicely as you can see there, I use the Manichaean bulls symbol on his right shoulder pad. Um, they fit nicely on there. So, you know, beg, borrow, steal, uh, you know, ask your mates uh, if they're not going to use them, uh, which I suspect uh, a lot of them aren't. Um, I know Solar might not be the most wildly popular army. Um, I am a huge fan. I always wanted a Solar army, but I could never afford it when they were in, uh, in resin. So I'm very, uh, I'm really pumped about this release. Hence why we're going to have probably three, I think three videos all look good these guys uh we'll do infantry we'll do vehicles and then maybe an alternate scheme tank maybe towards the later uh, latter end of the month i reckon uh then for chipping the panels i just mixed a little uh, pale blue so an off-white color into my techlist blue uh, and did some chips along the edges and then i've taken dark rust which is a dark red brown color uh to fill uh some of those chips in with and just create that nice little bit of weathering i felt that sponge weathering would be uh too inaccurate with this uh, so I wanted to just do it with the brush and it doesn't take very long there's there's hardly anything on them these miniatures are very small um, so it's not a, not a long process and then for any areas that I was having as black leather I just started mixing scale 75 goby brown into the black and doing a couple of highlights there are quite a lot of mixes for these the schemes that I'm going to do here for, for elements like the leather and, and stuff but there are so few paints and so few elements to these miniatures and the areas are so small um, I actually don't think the mixing is an issue uh, whatsoever uh, and then i wanted a nice different brown to use for some of the leather strapping so i've just used thondia brown uh, by games workshop and then i'm highlighting that with goby brown again by scale 75 so keeping the colors sort of nice and minimal but um making them all work uh, with each other and just clearly defining all those different parts uh, of the miniature and i use that as well for the little air recycling pump case bit um yeah i think they've done a great job turning these into plastic um the changes that are made i think have been have been really nice uh now i'm going to use games workshop iron warriors here it's just a dark silver color it's one of my favorite ones to use uh, and i find that if i use a little bit of something like lamia medium to uh, thin it down with ever so slightly i find it flows beautifully uh, around the miniature uh, so it's probably my go-to sort of dark silver uh, at the minute uh, and then speaking of go-tos, anything brassy bronze gets a base coat using scale 75 decayed metal. Um, Solar are right up my alley. There's all this wonderful sort of Baroque um, imagery with them and, and, and they're just covered in, it's all, I guess, steampunk almost, I guess, like uh, metal. And I love painting metal. I love how it looks for gaming armies, particularly um, proper, proper metallics. Um, so yeah, so, suffice to say mine will be covered uh, in different weathered up uh, metals. Uh, and then I noticed in the color plates, they had a lot of them had this really lovely, very pale sort of brass uh, uh, weaponry and stuff like that. So I've used Rune Lord brass here, and I am highlighting it, but I'm all, almost, it's a very big highlight, I guess, 
uh, are kind of just leaving the scale 75 in the recesses. Uh, and then for any areas that I've done silver, I'm just using a slightly thinned down rattling grime here as a wash. So rattling grime is a contrast paint, but I just add a little bit of water in uh, and just treat it like a wash instead. Uh, again, one of my, my favorite, very, very quick recipes for army painting is Iron Warriors with, with rattling grime over the top. I think it's, it's very, very effective. Uh, and then for the brassy parts, I'm using uh, a Games Workshop shade paint here. This is Pox Walker. Again, it's just this lovely, quite subtle, gentle, uh, kind of verdigris vibe uh, it's giving to the brass uh, and I would say this is probably my favorite thing I discovered doing this video as it were I always like to try and throw together new recipes for videos just to keep things interesting um, some of them I will never ever use again uh, I just go back to my you know my my, my usual store um, but this one I will be using uh, often I think it's uh, I think it's come out really really nicely as I say, these models, they fly together for building them and actually they take very little time I found to paint. I'm going to paint up a unit of them just to sort of put my money where my mouth is uh, and we can reflect on that in a couple of weeks time if I found anything that I would do uh, differently. Uh, but that's him sort of more or less ready to go now before we do the oils stage. So I'm going to use Sepia here by Abtonung 502. It's quite a dark, cold brown colour. Uh, I'm putting a little blob in there. Uh, I'm using a synthetic brush. Uh, and then I'm going to thin that down using just normal mineral spirits. Uh, I just use normal white spirits when I'm filming the videos. They evaporate very quickly, they dry very quickly, so it's useful, but they do stink. Uh, if I was going to do a whole unit at the same time, I would use something like Sansador by Winsor & Newton, which is an odorless artist grade thinner. Uh, it's just much more pleasant to work with uh, when one, when time doesn't matter because it, it takes longer to dry, uh, but also, you know, the smell, the lack of smell is, uh, is very nice. Uh, so yeah and then I'm going to give the entire miniature a coat with this wash so it, it is quite a thin wash we're almost using it as a filter um, I don't really need it to bring too much definition into the miniature we've already achieved a nice amount of definition and separation between the different areas this is just to sort of tint everything and give it that slightly more military modeling vibe old old school sort of imperial armor vibe um, and just a little bit heavier for instance on the armor plates to give them a bit more bit more dirt and grime on those um, but yeah, as I say, the entire miniature is going to get it. And I just start at the top and work my way down. And if I need to apply another coat, I will. If I need to clean up any areas, uh, I will with a with a clean brush. Um, but that's it after it's dried. That's after about an hour. Um, and I think I think the difference is huge. You know, I, I, I love I love the difference it makes. Um, it just brings that life and, and, and grime to the miniature. Uh, and then the last, or one of the last steps really, is to do the lenses. And this is a very old sort of military modeling thing where we choose a super bright silver color. So I've used Valeo Model Air Steel here. And then we use a clear paint. And I'm going to use Tamiya Clear Red here, uh, which is a, a it's it's a, a solvent-based uh, sort of lacquer style paint. Um, really thick and gloopy, this one. Uh, so it can be quite difficult to get it to run off the brush. Um, and I'm just going to apply it in a few layers, let it dry uh, between the two. I think I get his right eye lens a bit nice. I've got it put it near the tip of the brush there, so it's it's wicked off the brush a little bit easier. Um, but just a couple of layers of that, and we get this lovely sort of glossy lens look. And for me, it's certainly not for everybody. You know, if you want to paint these lenses sort of painted as it were, that's great. But for me, I love this style. I think it fits uh, with the miniatures and everything, uh, and certainly my interpretation of them. And then the last thing I like to do, um, that oil wash will have dulled everything down which is nice, but I think it's nice to bring a little bit of shine back to the metals. So I'll often go back in just in a couple of key areas. You know, we're talking 30 seconds to a minute, if that per miniature, just to pick out a few little edges uh, with the whatever the highlight color was that you used previously. And I think that's plenty for an army painting uh, paint job. Um, there's tons you could do to go further, um, but I actually think that's, that's very, very effective for the time that it takes us. So next up is the Lord Marshal's Own, one of the Agathon uh, cohorts. This is a, a classic scheme uh, that's yeah, been around since we, we first saw them painting the solar, and it's a popular one uh, with people. Uh, and I love it because it's, it's one of these metallic clear schemes that I like uh, to do. Now, I've done a little bit of sub-assemblies on this, so if I want to paint the helmet and the shoulder pads with uh, clear green over metals, so I have not glued those on, just left them as they are, and snip the sprue so so it's easy as you saw me earlier i had um I, I i had left the heads of themselves if i was going to do this across the unit i would leave them on the sprue like this clean them up and paint them like that before i glued them on you can see the contact points just straight underneath on the neck so it's easy um, but for this video i'm obviously just using the one uh, so i'll just pop it on the cork but this is not an efficient way to do it 
um, but it's just showing you uh, how I would paint it. Um, and also it's worth saying with the colours, like they vary across the different plates. I've chosen to do green head and shoulders and brass on the rest of him. Um, you could do green fatigues, do whatever. Um, but this is this is how I've chosen to interpret it. Um, but when it comes to painting these metallic clear schemes, uh, we want a really, really dark metallic underneath and a really, really bright one over it. There's tons of different ones out there that you can use. Just use what you like. And if you don't have one that's dark enough, find your darkest one and mix some black into it and you'll get it dark. But really, you're looking for almost metallic black uh, and then a very, very bright silver over the top. So effectively, it's your black and your white that you would use on a normal pre-shade or, or a traditional grayscale pre-shade. And then what I like to do with them is to just add a little bit of texture and sort of life in. So I'm sort of stippling on uh, the paint initially. I'm having to do it really gently in this video because, as I say, their head just wobbles around everywhere. If it was on the sprue, you could be a little bit more um, forceful. Uh, but all I've done uh, for this one, if, if you want the exact colour, uh, not that I think it matters, uh, but I chose to mix Iron Warriors uh, and black to get mine uh, with because they're the paints I'm using across the rest of the miniatures that I'm painting for this tutorial. So it just it made sense um, from an efficiency point of view. So you can see there we just stipple on that, that dark colour. Uh, and then for the highlight, we get the nice bright silver. I think I used Vallejo Model Air Steel for this one. Um, it's what I've used on most of the rest of the models. So I think that was probably the one I used for this. Uh, and here we just again stipple this on uh, where to reflect where we think the light source is coming from. So so usually above. Uh, maybe on a, on a slight angle, but there's such tiny areas on this miniature. It's like, don't stress about it. Just just bang a bit of highlight on there, and it will look cool. So on the shoulder pads, I'm just going to do the the middles of them, so the the apex of the curve, uh, as it were. And you can see a little bit better on the shoulder pad that texture effect uh, that we are that we're getting. Uh, I, I love it. It's just one of my favourite ways to to paint stuff. And we're going to use uh, lacquers here to to do it with. I mentioned the uh, Tamiya clears before. Uh, you can see here, and then you've got other brands do different types. So that's a MIG one uh, on the left. Um, but yeah, most most uh, hobby brands will do uh, clears, as it were. Games Workshop do have a range of clears, uh, not many. Something like Anger on Red, that behaves more like a clear. Um, but uh, I tend to go to for, for Tamiya's and things like that if I want to do this type of painting. And uh, now in the airbrush, we're using a Tamiya paint. We need to use a Tamiya thinner, so it's a solvent-based thinner, so X20A thinner. And I have thinned this probably three drops of thinner for every one drop of paint. Still, I'm always spraying 20, 25 PSI, again using 0.4 millimeter needle and nozzle uh, in our Harder and Steenbeck Evolution. And we just build it up and layer it up. Now, skipping ahead slightly there, you can see the red. Uh, I've used a contrast paint to do the red on there. So that sort of looks more like a metallic red. Whereas that green gives us that lovely candy coat effect, uh, which sort of has a little bit more depth to it. Um, so yeah, there's there's tons of options uh, out there for it. But that's all it is, just just the one green. Uh, and then for the uh, material, the undersuit, the boiler suit, whatever it's called on these guys, yeah, I've chosen to base coat it using uh, Eshin Grey. Uh, and then to highlight it, I'm using Skaven Blight Dinge, and I'm adding into Skaven Blight Dinge a little bit of that Vallejo pale blue that I mentioned earlier, but basically just an, an off-white, um, just mixing it in to build the highlights up uh, for it. But yeah, I've got to admit, like I, I've thoroughly enjoyed painting these these models. I really enjoyed painting the new guard stuff when that came out as well. Um, it's uh, it's just. It's fun, I think, particularly, you know, if you're a Heresy fan as well and you've, you've generally only painted Marines, the Solar offer you a nice little little break from that. You can paint some slightly different elements on miniatures. Um, I say, I know they're not to everybody's tastes, but I really want to paint them, so you're going to get a bunch of videos on them, so I hope you enjoy them. Um, yeah, I guess I'll find out when we, we see what the views are like uh, come the end of the month. Um, but at this point, it's worth saying if there's a particular scheme that you're interested in, do let me know in the comments because it may well be that I have time uh, to feature that uh, in some of the upcoming videos. So I'd like to do the Sentinel, basically like to paint, paint my way through the box and take you guys along with me. Uh, it won't be a coherent army at the end of it um, because there will be different schemes. But what we'll hopefully do is cover all the different ways that you might want to choose uh, approaching to paint. them. Well, some different ways anyway that I can show you. Uh, now, for the panels themselves, uh, say so my interpretation of this scheme was brass panels on most of him, green on a couple, grey fatigues. Uh, I've base coated them using Scale 75 uh, decayed metal, and then I'm highlighting them using Scale 75 Victorian brass, uh, and I'm stippling this on again, really, really tiny 
uh, dry brush I'm using to stipple uh, this with. And uh, again, just sort of roughly putting the highlights where they where they should be. But it's really to just scratch up and make make the arm look interesting. And I, I love how this came out. I'm very, very tempted to do something like this. Uh, should I choose to do a little bit more solar? Uh, I'm not sure. I really enjoyed doing that fleshy quartz army for fantasy. Um, so it might be quite fun to do some a little heresy project for myself, playing some games with my, my group at the minute. So although we're focusing more on the Shadow Crusade, which is all that Ultramar stuff, so maybe uh, figure something out to get get a little Zone Mortalis Force of these guys or something done. Um, but anyway, once they were dry, uh, I've used Celia Green Shade here, which is uh, another Games Workshop wash. Uh, and I'm just slopping that on and then just moving the paint, pushing it around before it dries to make sure it stays mainly uh, in the recesses. And this is just to, to make that armor look slightly corroded, uh, more aged. Um, Lord Marshall's own is a really, it's a really cool, uh, I think, scheme and, and regiment to do. Um, so yeah, I, I, was, I was looking forward to having a, having a go at it. Uh, and then for the chipping on the clear schemes, obviously we can't really use a light green. We, we can use a, a lighter green. We could paint it silver and then paint green over it and that would be a tiny bit brighter. But if we look at the color plates, particularly the way they damage up and scratch these, these uh, clear schemes uh, is they just use a nice bright silver over the top. So that's all we're going to do. We're just going to tippy tappy chip our way along some of the edges uh, and just create that battle damage uh, and weathering uh, on the miniatures. And then for the brass panels, all I've done is mixed a little bit of the, the Valero Model Air Steel that I used to chip the green. I've just mixed a little bit of that into the Rune Lord Brass. Um, sorry, not Rune Lord Brass, into the Victorian Brass, which was that highlight colour that we stippled on uh, to panels just to create a little edge uh, highlight colour, as it were, to do to do the chipping with. Uh, and generally, I find with metallics, it's just the key is just to go really, really big jumps. Um, between the colors you use you know dark and then much much brighter the celia green shades of obviously has dulled it down a little bit anyway so that helps us and uh yeah it's just i think very very effective particularly effective i think for gaming armies because i think it just looks fab from from three foot away and then for the rest of the model uh, i've used uh, iron warriors again here for the silver parts of the miniature so the vast majority of the colors do really don't matter um, but I know people like to have a recipe to work from. Um, but, uh, you know, if you've got paints you use that are similar, just go 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 with them, use what you like uh, to use. And then Decay Metal again for the, the brassy bits. Uh, rattling Grime, watered down, a little bit of water. I suppose I shouldn't be so relaxed with this because maybe people have jumped just to watch this scheme. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to use her watered down Rattling Grime as a wash uh, over the silvers. I think it's very effective. Uh, it also dulls them right down as well as adding you know a bit of uh, definition which is lovely for this sort of aged uh, look that we're trying to, to go for um, i think that overall look a little bit of pterodon turquoise i mixed in there as well just for that sort of uh, verdigris ish look just aging really to the metal um, oxidization to the to that sort of copper coppery bronze color um but yeah i i'm kind of going for that that old fashioned sepia photo type look i think with these miniatures which i like uh, hence why sepia was a, a nice oil to use uh so again sepia same color that i've used on the lord marshall's uh, on the previous scheme on the blue scheme uh, again i wanted this one because it was nice and dark uh, quite cold uh, and i felt would would not distract particularly uh, from anything uh, on the model and i'm making a thin wash up here so again i'm using white spirits to dilute that paint with that's too thin uh, so i'm adding a little bit more of the oil in uh, we just want it to say filter the miniature so we put the layer over it and it just tints and changes the the colors that are underneath it but it doesn't apply tons of oil to the surface that we can then manipulate and move and streak and all that that's not the aim with this wash if you wanted that look you need to make your wash much thicker and again starting at the top working my way uh, down the miniature sort of area by area this is not sped up. This is sort of real time footage. So it's just, it's a nice, quick and easy job to do. Just be careful not to overly flood any area uh, with it. If that happens, what tends to happen is all the pigment will, gravity will pull it down and it will pull just in sort of certain recesses that are lower down. 
there we go i left that one uh, that's dried overnight actually but it's about an hour that's what that that looks like but i left it this one to dry uh, overnight again it's it's just knocked everything back a little added that little sort of brownie veneer to everything and i think just looks yeah just absolutely absolutely beautiful now i remember that when i picked up that first imperial armor book and i saw what, what mark bedford and phil stashinskis were doing with these different materials like it just it changed everything for me it, yeah, it kept me in the hobby and has ultimately led to to what i do now um so those boys are just absolute legends um so yeah really cool to be able to still be using these paints and these techniques you know from, from 15 years ago whatever it was uh so for the eyes silver and then in with a tamiya clear red just with the brush um i would suggest use a brush that you don't care about when you're using tamiya generally you don't use tamiyas with a brush they're horrible um, but applying the clears like that works absolutely fine and then our final scheme for this video is going to be the Chthonian Headhunters, so the main baddies, as it were. Um, these guys affiliated with the Sons of Horus, um, but also, you know, just huge regiment, loads of cohorts uh, around everywhere with the bad guys. So this is another scheme that we are going to do the uh, clear coat on, as it were. Uh, so same with the highlight, dark silver, and then a nice bright silver. Uh, just stippled on for a bit of additional texture. And then I'm going to use Flesh Terrors Red Contrast Paint. Now I've thinned this about one to one, maybe slightly less, maybe one to two, one drop of thinner to one drop of uh, paint. I'm just using normal airbrush thinner, I think, for layers, what I've got at the minute, uh, and it works well. And then just applying a few coats uh, of that through the airbrush, 20, 20 to 25 PSI, 0.4 millimeter needle and nozzle. And you'll notice that we do get a different, uh, more dull look with the contrast paints than with the clears. Um, I like it. I like both. Uh, I think they work well. For me, this reads more as like a metallic red rather than a candy color. Uh, for the fatigues, I've done exactly the same as on the Agathon guys. So it was a base coat of Eshin gray, uh, then using Skaven Blight Dinge with increasing amounts of Vallejo pale blue added in uh, just to create the highlights. And just following the folds and highlighting the, the raised areas. This is a really nice quick scheme. This is one I'm quite keen to do. Uh, should I choose to do anything? Uh, because we've primed in black so now all our armor panels are ready to go um, i did give the miniature a touch up with uh, black in the airbrush just to make sure it's nice and solid before we moved on um, before i did the grays or anything like that but it just means the panels are ready to go and looking at the color art i decided to copy that where they've got a nice bit of rust showing so i've used thondia brown here uh, as the rust uh, color to do a bit of chipping with uh, and then i'm using ammo mig gunmetal dry brush which is this lovely uh, dark silver slightly brown uh, silver um, and i'm just going to use that to add more chips uh, along the edges of the armor with very very effective because you've got essentially a matte black then you've got a nice reddy brown color and then you've got a metallic silver on top of it so there's lots tons of contrast there uh, but it just makes it look nice and interesting and i decided i just didn't need to do any rendering with the black armor flat black panels were absolutely fine with some chipping on the edges um it looks great it's very quick <laughs> so yeah as i say i'm i'm kind of tempted to do some a little headhunters force uh, i think they would they would be fun to do uh, and should andy ever finish his sons of horrors you know we could uh, we could get some fun doubles games in uh, with those guys uh, so i've glued the shoulder pads on and stuff now you notice the shoulder pads look different that's because they've got gloss varnish on them from me doing the decals uh, so you see the difference the gloss makes uh, over the top of that contrast paint and it's something I need to remember at the end of the miniature to either mat the panels back on the shoulder or gloss the helmet to make them both sort of read the same, whichever you prefer the look of. Uh, for chipping them, again, just like the colour plates, over these clear schemes, just a nice bright silver to chip the edges with. So most parts of this miniature have, what, two or three steps, if that, per, per thing. Uh, and I think it's, you know, it's very effective. I mean, you look at certain areas like the piping and stuff, I, I've just left that black on everything and with the brown wash at the end it, it works absolutely fine um so as, as i say i've done everything here with the the idea of this is the minimum i would do if i was to paint an army of something and then decay metal because it's wonderful and i'm gonna slop it all over any solar that i ever paint uh, and i went for the pale uh, brass with this one so uh, a nice heavy highlight of the rune lord brass from games workshop I say that we're getting more and more color plates now for the solo. You do have some in the old black books that Forge World used to do, 
um, but we do have more in the the books that they're the sort of campaign books they're creating at the moment so you've got quite a lot in the um, Great Slaughter, which is the Legion's Imperialis book that's come out recently. Uh, and I suspect, given that these are to feature heavily in the Beta Garmin book uh, that's coming up for 30k, I suspect that there'll be some more colour plates uh, in that one as well, which is always nice to have a little bit of reference. On the flip side, just it's, it's, it's a huge sandbox, right? You can do whatever colour schemes you want, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to people getting hold of these kits and, and, and seeing some different takes. Uh, on, on, on the sort of classic way of doing it. Uh, and then any silver areas on him, I chose to use the gunmetal dry brush colour um, rather than Iron Warriors. Um, to be honest with you, just because I had it on my palette, there wasn't any reason other than that. It just saved me opening the, uh, the Iron Warriors pot. Uh, and then a wash of Rattling Grime Contrast, just thinned with water, so it behaves more like a wash and less like a contrast paint. I've used Victorian brass on some of the areas uh, that I want to be the sort of that archaic machinery, so the rebreathing stuff. And this was just to differentiate it from the Rune Lord brass uh, parts on the miniature. Uh, and then given that a little pterodon turquoise uh, wash. I know this has flipped back to an older miniature, but I forgot to film doing the pterodon bit uh, on the uh, Chthonian guy. And then a different uh, oil wash for this guy, I've gone for Shadow Browns. So it's a slightly warmer brown colour. Uh, and I've done this because on the colour plates you can see a little bit more sort of ready rust colours uh, in the in the recesses. If I was going to do this for myself, I would take it a few steps further and I would apply some of those colours into the recesses as well. Um, but I felt like this was a a decent compromise. Um, so I'm just using Shadow Brown, Abtalung 502, mixed with mineral spirits, uh, and then a filter wash all the way over the miniature. Now I normally use a synthetic brush with uh, oil paints because the mineral spirits will destroy your natural hairbrush. Um, sometimes if I have a bad natural hairbrush, so like this one I got and it just had a horrible hook uh, in the end of it, um, I will just relegate that to the oil pile anyway. Um, but uh, it's, it's not one of my normal brushes. And I think this one was very effective when it had dried. I really, really loved uh, the, what, what that had done to the panels. Now I do give the shoulder pads a little coat of uh, ultramat varnish, by the way, just to tie them in uh, with the same finish as the helmet. Uh, but I don't show myself uh, doing that. Uh, and then for the eye lenses, or and the little lens in his shoulder here, uh, again, model air steel, nice super bright silver. I've obviously blacked the area out to begin with, uh, and then I'm going to use clear green here rather than clear red, like I used on the other guys, just for getting that little bit of contrast. Apply it in a few layers, be more patient than I am, let them dry in between, and you just get a lovely depth uh, to the lenses and it, particularly when it's tiny tiny areas like this it's I think it's so effective uh, for our miniatures um, and nice and quick to do as well um, and then just like on the others a few little touch-up steps at the end where we just pick out a few areas of the metals with a little re-highlight just to bring a little bit of that shine back to the models and that's the three of them done. Um, on the bases, that's just our usual basing style for YouTube. I'll link up in the top uh, how we do that. And I'll list the powders down below, but they were Burnt Umber and Light Sienna from Vallejo. Just smushed in uh, to give it an effect. Uh, so yeah, here's our first sort of three army painted schemes for the Solar Auxilia. Um, like I say, there are so many you could do, um, so many different ways of doing it. I've, I've tried to stick to the more sort of classic look um, with these ones. Um, and sort of my interpretation of that anyway uh, and I think perhaps for the future ones we'll we'll maybe go a little bit more off script and and look at other ways that we can we can approach painting these these models because you know there were an, an awful lot of them these these guys whilst they were the elite uh, of the human forces uh, in the heresy they were still incredibly numerous um, so you know there's there's bound to be a cohort that you can create in your own scheme and it'd be absolutely legitimate um, and yeah I can't wait to see what people do with them um, but I hope as well that that this is this has shown how simple um, they can be to paint I, I know spoken to a lot of people and they were quite intimidated by solar before not just the price of them but potentially working with resin which I, I can understand um, you know these are very durable now they're in plastic they're very easy to kit bash as well I'm sure we're going to see some amazing kit bashes um, the head is just that normal ball and socket joint right I played around with a few different ones um, that I had lying around like the Mechanicum heads work really well, or Mechanicus, sorry, 
um, Scutari heads and stuff, they, they fit in there really well. But anything with that ball and socket joint that's sort of human sized, you can just drop straight in here. The arms, as I say, are a nice flat join at the shoulders, which is same, similar to a lot of kits as well. So imagine there'll be plenty you can do between this and the uh, Imperial Guard kits that came out last year, amazing kits. Um, so if you want to create some sort of militia or some more ragtag looking stuff, uh, I think it's going to be absolutely uh, incredible uh, what we're going to see from, from different people uh, coming up. So I cannot wait uh, for that. So yeah, I think next week, let's uh, let's take a look at the Sentinel. Let's do, uh, let's do a vehicle, how we can translate the scheme across a bit uh, and a few of the different areas that we might come up against uh, that we don't feature uh, on an infantry miniature. As I said earlier, if there's anything particular scheme-wise or stuff you'd like me to take a look at, please let me know in the comments because I may well have time to be able to fit that in. Uh, over the, the next coming months. I'd like to do a bunch of heresy stuff over the next few months. Uh, it's something I'm very passionate about and it's something we seem to be getting a load of releases for at the minute, which obviously helps us with the, the YouTube channel. We, we kind of need to be fairly current with what we do most of the time. Um, so it's always lovely when those two things can can marry up uh, and be something that, that we're passionate about uh, as well. So as usual, if you've got any questions about anything I've done in the video, pop them down in the comments. I will get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks ever so much for your support. I just want to say if you're watching this live tonight on the premiere, I'm sorry I can't be there in the chat. I'm actually teaching an airbrushing class up in Cheltenham tonight, but I believe Ben's going to drop in and he loves painting this kind of thing. So if you've got any questions as well, pop them in the chat. I'm sure he'll, uh, he'll have a natter with you. Thanks ever so much for all your support. Take care and I'll see you next time. If you've liked any of the models in this video and you fancy having an army of them yourself, but perhaps you don't have the time or wherewithal to get it done, consider dropping us an email at commissions at cultofpaint.com and maybe Ben can sort you out.